Hi and welcome to Accent Excellence. I'm Chuck Lionberger. And you know these guys. It's Dick and Dave from Q99. It's July. That means it's time for Pack the Bus. It's coming up at the end of this month. And we're going to tell you all about how you can be involved and help provide school supplies for children in need here in Roanoke County and beyond. For folks at home who might not have heard about Pack the Bus, hopefully you all know everything about Pack the Bus, but just in case you haven't heard it, in case. just in case, tell us a little bit about Pack the Bus and, and kind of how it got started. Well, Pack the Bus, so we've been doing it now for over 10 years. I think we're on about 12th year now we've been doing this. Uh, and we service uh, all of the uh, area schools in our listening area. And what we do literally is bring school buses to area Walmarts, and we ask folks and companies and you know corporate donations to bring money and uh, school supplies, and we fill that bus up with as many school supplies as we can, and send it back to the to the school districts where the school supplies get distributed uh, to the students who need it. And, and Dick, it's been a really big help to communities, all, not just here in Roanoke County, and we oh, greatly yeah. appreciate it, but, but really, again, all around the Q99 listening area. Yeah, right? something like 23 school 23. districts, and we do 14 of these bus stops over a course of five days, so we really hit the geography in central and southwest Virginia to try and touch as many of uh, these school kids with school supplies as we can to help them out, because we believe that every child deserves the That's tools right. to learn. That's right. And there are a lot of people and organizations that come out and help us for this. Oh, absolutely. We've gotten, uh, over the years, we've gotten a lot of uh, corporate uh, help from our friends at Walmart and Pepsi, and uh, they've been real leaders uh, mm -hmm. in making sure that, you know, we get the school supplies that we need. But the, the great thing is, too, that, you know, local companies in the school district's area, you know, like in Roanoke County, we'll get, you know, companies in Roanoke yeah. County that will just pool their resources, money, or the supplies. They'll have their own school supply drive yeah. right there within their business, and then they, they bring the supplies that they've raised right out to our our, uh, yeah. bus stops and and they just it's such a it's such a great help and we just really couldn't do it without that corporate push it really gets us over the top and and Dick you know as well we get folks who just come in off the street on their own and they can participate right. as well absolutely these folks can bring out money they can bring out gift cards or they can bring out bags of school supplies that they've already purchased and uh, if you bring out money what we have is a lot of the the administrators and the teachers come mm -hmm. out because they know exactly what they need yep. and they go in and do the shopping but one of the coolest things ever at Pack the Bus is when you see uh, a small child, six, seven, eight mm -hmm. years old, right. coming up to the school bus with a bag of school supplies saying, I wanted to help other children that need these school supplies. Yeah. So I love it when that happens. Yeah, it really touches your heart. It yeah. really does. It really, now, when we're talking about school supplies, you know, what are we talking about here? Oh, we're talking about whatever you can think of, you know, as far as, I mean, the basics, you know, paper and pens and pencils uh, to some of the younger kids. Uh, the kindergarten age and that kind of preschoolers uh, like you know the the, the wet wipes and these yeah. kinds of things are the, are the mats that the kids uh, take a nap on so it really is a wide variety mm -hmm. you know from you know the compass to you know the protractors and all that kind of stuff notebooks pens paper uh, to some of the other stuff that you might not not think about boxes of Kleenex you wouldn't believe how many schools you know how much uh, how many boxes of Kleenex that oh, a yeah. school can go through in a year you know what some people do is they'll actually go in and get one of the school supply lists that are stocked in the Walmart stores mm -hmm. for a particular grade, and they'll actually get a backpack and go and get all the school supplies that are on that particular sheet, put them in the backpack, and drop it off like that. Some That's people nice. do it that way. And, and speaking of backpacks, that alone is another big item. You'd be surprised right. at how many kids come to school, and they don't even have something like a backpack, which to, you know, especially a younger right. student, that's such a, a personal oh, yeah. item. That's what goes with them to school in exactly. and out and to and fro. And so to have something like that. Also talk a little bit about the fact of how it helps the self-esteem of these students who oh, you know, they, they right. might not be able to, well, their parents might not be mm -hmm. able to afford it. Yes. And so they have right. the supplies. So a lot, we hear this from the teachers a lot, you know, first day or two of school and you have 75, 80% of the kids with all the stuff that they need and they're ready to go right. in the nice fancy backpacks. And then you have the two or three students there whose parents could not afford it, right? Well, how does that make them feel? It makes them feel like mm -hmm. they're not prepared. Right. It makes them feel like they're not excited to learn. So that's why we say we want all the kids to have the tools that they need to learn. It's a level playing field then at the beginning of school when they have these supplies, and it does help their esteem, and hopefully it'll help them want to learn and do better in school. It's all about providing supplies so the kids can, can be there so that when they arrive on the first day of school, if they need something, yep. it's there for them to do. Yeah. But it's also just a lot of fun. I mean, <laughs> that is. being in that environment, I mean, shopping. Is, right. 
you want to come and see a madhouse, <laughs> yeah. like one of those old uh, you know, shopping games where you're literally just everybody right. hitting everything. Turn everybody loose, it, it, and it, everybody's it got a gift a, card, and they're moving. Yeah, and yeah, it gets to be a madhouse, doesn't it? It really does, and and we really appreciate, you know, Roanoke County, Dr. Lorraine Lang has been out, and she comes out oh, every yeah. year, mm -hmm. and she will load the carts up, and she'll do the shopping, and the teachers and administrators, and, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. Sometimes uh, some of the schools will bring, like, cheerleaders to come out and help, you know, just kind of, you know, get the, get the troops fired up, and it really is a great community event, and it kind of, as people kind of winding down the summer and getting kind of back in that back to school mode, even though they're not quite back to school, it just kind of gives that little boost of like, hey, we're ready to go, and this is this yep. is a lot of fun, and just getting a lot of community backing as we get ready for the school year. Yeah, it's a it's a little earlier than it has been in years past. We're doing it at the end of July, July the 31st. Let's tell them about some times. First place we're going to be is over at the Bonsack Walmart from 11 to 2, and then we're moving over to the new Clearbrook Walmart right. from 4 to 7, and again, Walmart has been such a huge yes. help to us. We want to make sure we, we especially give our, <laughs> our thanks to, to Walmart and also to Pepsi for, right. for everything they do. But most importantly, we want to thank you two because oh. you guys <laughs> have been there with us through thick and thin and helped to really grow this program. So on behalf of all of us at the school system, we really want to thank you guys and Q99 for all of your support and for promoting it because you know, we wouldn't be able to do Pack the Bus without you well, guys. That's very nice. And we also want to thank, because you know, Dick and Dave are here kind of in the front of Q99, but there's a lot of people that work behind the scenes in our promotions department right, and, right. and our sales staff that, that really uh, you know make the push too to help us uh, get where we are. But we appreciate uh, your acknowledgement. That's very nice. Well, we appreciate it. And folks, it's coming up. It's the end of this month, July the 31st. So come on out to Pack the Bus. Meet one of these guys. They'll be out. We'll be you never there. know. They're going to be this crazy stuff. I'll tell you. Q Bear's going to be there. It's a Q going on. It's, it gets wild. So come on out. Bonsack 11 to 2, and then Clear Book 4 to 7. So come on out and help us pack the bus. But be, for, be sure to stay right there because we also have a lot more accent excellence still to come. I need you to care now. Don't turn a blind eye to teenage drinking. Hi, and welcome back to Accent Excellence. We're at the Rona County Public Schools Administration Building, and joining me again is Barry Tucker. He's the coordinator of music and performing arts here at Rona County Public Schools. And Barry, we had a lot to celebrate this year. 10 years of being named one of the top 100 communities for music education. Absolutely. We, uh, we, we have a good music program and have had for a long time. I think it's pretty well known in the region and throughout the state that we've done good things in Rona County. For the folks at home, let's let's kind of take one step back and, and explain you know, what is this award that's done by the NAM Foundation? What does it all mean? It is an award that you have to apply for. So you, mm -hmm. you, you fill out, and the pretty revealing questions is it, you can tell they know what they're looking for. Uh, every school district or school can apply for the recognition to be honored as one of the best communities in for music education in the country. The NAM Foundation, of course, is a natural so it's National Association of Music Merchants, and they put this award together maybe 15 or so years ago. And um, so, you know, it, it is a pretty convoluted process mm -hmm. uh, to, fill out, to fill out the application. This is a, this is a big deal. Uh, they, ha they ask questions like, very, very, very revealing question. So they want you to know, like, uh, how many, what's this student teaching ratio? What's the amount of the budget spent on music in the Roanoke County? Uh, do, are all the teachers certified music teachers or are they just classroom teachers? So they obviously know what goes on across mm -hmm. the country. And you talk about budget. You know, one of the things I think that helps make this such a, a proud award for us, and again, this is 10 years that we've received mm -hmm. this award, we all have heard many of the stories about the, the budget being what it is, mm -hmm. but yet the arts and performing arts mm -hmm. programs are still alive and well and, and thriving here in Roanoke County, aren't they? They really are. Uh, everybody across the country has take, taken hits in budget, uh, mm -hmm. including Roanoke County, but we've made it, a, our school board and our superintendent have made it a priority to keep these activities and, and music and theater arts as a primary part of students' lives. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot of money's been spent, and uh, 
when it came to making cuts, we were able to we were able to keep that included, and that's not always the way it is everywhere. Yeah, and it's and it's important to keep music and performing arts alive because, as you well know, hmm. music and performing arts enhances the core subjects. Uh, well, I could go on for a long time about that, but it does right. enhance the core subjects. There's obviously data out there that shows that it improves test scores in other areas, and it, the quality of life for yeah. those students that involved is. is in, in, it, 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 it's a lifetime activity. Yeah. So, kind of walk through, you know, for us and, and for music. You know, we've been recognized again as a, a community for music education. What makes music and performing arts so special here in Roanoke County? Uh, well, for ten years, we've we've filled out the same applications, and there have been years when I thought, well, I don't know, because you know everybody's been through hard mm -hmm. times. Uh, we have we have. A lot of elementary music instruction uh, compared to some of the parts, other parts of the country. Uh, our, in fact, we just increased elementary music instruction several, two or three years ago when we went to encore scheduling. Our mm -hmm. elementary students get more musical instruction than they did prior to that. The schedule worked out in favor of music, and we're proud of it. So mm -hmm. we have uh, a good elementary music instruction by elementary music specialist, and uh, that's not the way it is everywhere. And we also uh, have very strong uh, instrumental band programs and choral programs that have been supported. We added our performing arts, mm -hmm. music, music theater arts program a couple years ago. So we're doing some things that, that's not being done all over the country. It would be it suffice to say that, I think it's, it's fair to, to say that Roanoke County students probably have more options and more opportunities in music and performing arts as compared to what might be considered the average across the nation. I don't think we'd have gotten an award if we didn't. Yeah. So we have uh, we have lots of opportunities for students to participate. We even have a good music theory program that some schools don't have and that really enables a lot of our students to go on. That particular one class enables a lot of our students to go on and major in music. And, and if, there, if you were talking with music majors across the country and they told you, why did you change your major, they'd tell you, because I didn't understand music theory. So we prepare students for that by offering that class. And we've had great success. You know, just recently we had a student at, at Wayneburg High School selected for the All-America Band. Correct. You know, so there's, there is proof in the pudding that right. you know, a strong music program has great benefits. And so, Barry, congratulations again on 10 years of being recognized as one of the top communities in the United States for music instruction. And I tell you what, we look forward to years 11, 12, 13, and beyond. So again, we, congratulations to you. We plan on it. Thank you. And folks, stay right there because we've got a lot more acts and excellence still to come. Sixty minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. Hi and welcome back to Acts and Excellence. We're at the Runner County Public Schools Administration Building and joining me once again is Frank Kiker. Of course, she's one of our coordinators of school counseling here for Runner County Public Schools. And Nancy Hands, who's with the Runner County Prevention Council. So guys, thanks for being with us yet again. And, and as you can see, Fran's got a little bit of bling in her hands here. Uh, Roanoke County Public Schools and the Prevention Council recently accepted a, a, a pretty nice award from the governor. Nancy, tell us about it. Well, um, it's called Savvy, and it is um, speaks to relationships. And we, we really did receive this because of an incredible collaborative that is here in Roanoke County. Um, and the key stake stakeholders, and it was to celebrate our relationship and what we do collectively to um, prevent risky behavior in youth, and specifically um, drugs and alcohol abuse. Fran, this has been a relationship that, that we, the school systems, have had with the Prevention Council for many, many years. And over the years, we've got a lot of stuff done, haven't we? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I want to say that it began even before our relationship uh, about 27 years ago we started with our student assistance program uh, where the school system stepped out and decided that they would try to help students and their families that were dealing with some pretty serious issues 
And so uh, about 10 years ago, the um, Prevention Council was formed uh, through a grant, and Nancy can talk about that grant, and we have been um, helped to uh, work through some of the things that we've worked through with a federal grant, mm -hmm. um, but we have become very strong partners. We call the Prevention Council our community arm. And so while we're working with students and their families in the yeah. school, we're also uh, providing leadership for students and working with families uh, and the community through the Prevention Council. And because Nancy, we've talked about this mm -hmm. times before, while a lot of times you know, we have a substance abuse program because there are students who are making some poor choices and there mm -hmm. are consequences with those choices, but the school is the tripwire. The, the, the behavior doesn't mm -hmm. happen at school. And Nancy, right. you have a great phrase for that. You call it not a school's problem, but a community problem. Correct. Explain that a little Correct. bit. Well, these behaviors, and because of the data that we have, and again, here's another relationship. We have a partner with Virginia Tech, and that's where we gather um, our data is analyzed. Um, but we, because of this incredible relationship with the school system, Dr. Lang, Lang really believes that um, the data is important, so we survey every six through 12th grader and we get information from them. Now, we do know that because of the data says it does not happen in the schools. The problems happen in the community. The only way that we solve community yeah. issues yeah. is we have to solve them through a community approach. And that's through these relationships of key stakeholders and the community and parents and youth all looking at how can we all contribute to a healthier Roanoke County. Because one of the things, you know, the SAP and the SAP program, that's addressing students who have already taken some actions. But what's happening over here with the community mm -hmm. is preventing it from right. ever happening in the first mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. So we try to run the whole gamut of, uh, you know, we are so fortunate to have um, this captive audience, in a sense, um, our student body. And so we really think we intervene at early ages, uh, not only uh, in intervention after something has happened, but also in prevention on all levels to uh, try to educate our students as to how things can uh, happen in their lives and how it can affect their lives. I, I really think it's a wonderful um, it, it's a wonderful outcome for people to start at that early age. Now, speaking of outcomes, mm -hmm. and let's go back to what's sitting in your hand right here, the Savvy Award. Yes. We were very fortunate, again, recognized mm -hmm. as, a, as a model program, and, mm -hmm. and Nancy, you could talk a little bit about how big of a deal that is, mm -hmm. the fact that we're recognized as a, as a model program. Right. Um, there, this was tiered, so there were, were other tiers. There were honorable mentions, um, effective um, programs, promising programs, and we were one of two um, that got the top award from the governor, um, and it was a model program. And truly, this was a collaborative effort. Our partners, uh, I. The, the list goes on, but um, we certainly wrote, work very closely um, with resource officers, Roanoke County Police, uh, Judge Trumpeter and the, and the 23rd District Court Services, um, parents. Um, we have a faith-based um, community that we work with, um, specifically St. John's Lutheran, um, and then all of the youth that are a part of this. And we also have evidence-based programs, um, and we work collaboratively with um, Blue Ridge Behavioral Health, Family Service, and the list goes on and on and on. So in order to achieve these outcomes, and we have um, moved that needle down and less students are doing less risky behavior, but we can't do it alone. Not one single entity can do it alone. The way that it works is that we really do need to come together as a community and collaboratively believe in the mission of fostering healthy development in youth. Yeah, so and, here's, here's the good news is, as Nancy said, the, the, the needle is trending down. The bad news is it's going to take even more work mm -hmm. to move mm -hmm. the needle that much further, isn't it? Yes. Well, it's a never-ending process because you get new young people coming up. Right. And so it's a constant educational process. And But we've seen so much um, progress, I think, that we are still as passionate about it as we ever were. And we think that uh, it is something that really benefits our, our students. But back to our collaboration, we have some collaborations that are kind of unusual that we thought of uh, to mention uh, Carillion and the doctors, the physicians that give the sixth grade checkups mm -hmm. uh, through um, some brochures that we've provided. They give information to parents 
um, for their sixth grade child because it's good to get information in their hands early. We work with the Runnett Children's Theater and for three years now we have taken one whole uh, class, either a sixth grade, seventh grade, or ninth grade class to see plays that are topical about important topics uh, now like bullying, uh, like alcohol, and most recently about depression and suicide. So, um, and we find that those students really remember those things. They remember those um, uh, things that come at them in a sort of an unusual uh, medium. It's okay. been a fantastic partnership, mm -hmm. and it's an award to a great partnership. Mm -hmm. And but before we wrap up, we do have mm -hmm. to say that, that there's some sad moments here because Fran is retiring <laughs> and leaving us here at Roanoke County Public Schools. And I would personally would be remiss if I didn't say a very special thank you and our great appreciation to everything that Fran has done, not only for this partnership mm -hmm. but also for the school system. Mm -hmm. So we wish you all the best wow. uh, in your retirement. And uh, but don't worry, Nancy's not going to let you get away too far. <laughs> thank you, Chuck. <laughs> That's right. and folks. Again, a, a great partnership, and there's so much more still to come uh, with th this partnership and with the Prevention Council, and there's also still much more to come with Accent Excellence. So stay right there. That's low, that's low, that's low. Uh, that's low. Look, he's blushing. He's Hi, and we're back with more Accent Excellence. Just last month, we said goodbye and good luck to the class of 2013. Let's take a look back and hear some words of wisdom from our valedictorians. There's a fear about being in college and everyone. The fear that we won't fit in that we won't make friends, or that we won't be able to keep up with the work and pass classes. But are these rational fears? Do they even constitute as being fears? They are not dangerous. They are not threatening. They are challenges that lie before us and nothing to be frightened of. So ask yourselves, as we sit here together, what are you afraid of? All of us are set to do great things in the future. No matter what walk of life each of us is about to encounter, we will, without a doubt, go down in history as a legendary generation that surpass expectations. However, remember your past and how it shaped the person you are today. Victor Hugo said, change your opinions, keep your principles, change your leaves, keep intact your roots. The future is ours. We must seize it every single day, staying hungry and living without regrets. Please, Sony, there's just one more cliche in there. This is the time of our lives. We are the future. Bam. Two. All right, you're done. I'll now give you a list of my things that I've learned through my 13 years of experience with all of you that I believe make one successful. One, make at least one other person smile every day. Sharing joy can be contagious, and that smile may make a person stay. Two, go out of your way to help someone. This can be as simple as holding a door for someone with their hands full or talking to someone who doesn't seem to be themselves. Being selfless not only brings them joy, but should also bring you joy. And who knows when you may need someone to return the favor in the future. Three, make a list of the things to do each day and do them. This to end with the words of Dr. Seuss, you're on your own and you know what you know. You are the one who will decide where you'll go. So when you step, step with care and great tact. And remember that life's a great balancing act. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 fourths percent guaranteed. <laughs> I think it is important for all of us here today to realize how significant of an impact these friends and teachers and parents have had in our lives and to say thank you. Despite the obstacles, chase after your passions and what you love and make each moment your happiest. This school system, our superintendent, many administration officials, and hundreds of teachers have placed an investment in us with the hope of returning on that investment in the future. Graduates, look to your left and your right. We are the future of not only our town, our county, our state, or our country, but of this world. Always remember, you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. Congratulations, class of 2013. We made it. Make use of your ability to make a difference within your own life, and your legacy will follow suit with your efforts. Even though some of us will go our separate ways, the memories we have from our four years at William Byrd will last forever. called home for the past
past four years of our lives and go on to new homes, I have no doubt that this Viking family will last a lifetime. Though we join the families of Hokies, Cavaliers, Tigers, and many, many more, we will never forget who we are or where we came from. Vikings help each other in their time of need. A Viking never forgets where he came from. We are forever Vikings. This time, we must persevere with the courage of a Viking and not let fear stand in the way of our goals. However, courage does not mean the absence of fear. It's just acknowledging that fear and still possessing the strength to continue on. No task is too big or too small. And I know that our class of 2013 will use our talents to lead our communities to all new places, just like the ancient Vikings did so many years ago. And never let the odds of your dream prevent you from trying. Besides, there's always one more, more than one way to a dream, and big dreams come at a cost but the return investment will always be superior. So make your dreams a reality. No matter what kind of person you are, set yourself apart from the rest of the crowd. In all that you do in life, be a role model, be an individual, but most of all, be yourself. As individuals with freedom to think on our own, we have had to learn how to also think independently, which can have its own outcome entirely. So I urge you all, as you take that walk, to remember the path and all the steps before the steps you're about to take, not just where you are at the end of it. You might not necessarily need to remember how to derive and integrate equations or how to determine the molarity of a solution, but you will need to remember the lessons you've learned the past four years. There's always... Again, congratulations to everyone in the class of 2013, and we wish you all the best of luck. And we want you to stay right there because we've got more accent excellence still to come. I want to be a Broadway performer. I want to be a doctor. I want to be an environmental scientist. I want to be a fashion designer. I want to be a senator. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a professional athlete. I want to be cool. I want to be accepted. I want to fit in. I want to be popular. I want to be invited to parties. I don't want to be invisible anymore. I want to be part of the in crowd. You think you have to drink to be in the in crowd, but giving in to peer pressure isn't going to get you anywhere. Be true to yourself to accomplish your big dreams. Well, folks, that's going to do it for this month's edition of Accent Excellence. If you'd like to find out more about Roanoke County Public Schools, just check us out online and be sure to like us on Facebook. Also, don't forget you can watch back issues of Accent Excellence while you're on the website. I'm Chuck Leinberger. He's Dick Daniels. He's David Page. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.